Hi. Hi, everybody. Again, <laughs> welcome back to the Facebook Live, TWR Facebook Live. Sorry, um, there were a little bit <clears throat> noises uh, behind me, so I have to ask them to be a little bit quiet for uh, during this webcast. So, so again, I said, as I said, I'm very, very happy to uh, hear a lot of feedbacks and I ought also to hear that people are practicing and that um, practice is benefiting and to know what experiences are you are having and then of course uh, your comments and thank you particularly thank you very much for sharing with the other people and as we as a TWR Facebook live team is working really hard and I'm trying to do my best and uh, one of the uh, things that we request to all of you is to if is if this is beneficial for you if it is helping you and uh, then we are asking your help to spread the word and by simply liking commenting particularly sharing about it uh, to to rest of the uh, your friends uh, social friends so uh, this is we are requesting you. So today's particular topic is about uh, dissolving the pain and this is practices what we did last time. And there were a few, uh, and there were not that many questions, there were a few questions. I think the important questions were uh, this about the compassion, um, the absolute compassion and uh, relative compassion. So there's basically uh, how does this pain is get healed and what is the role of uh, uh, compassion, uh, absolute, I said, uh, relative compassion and what is the role of absolute compassion. And I made a comment uh, during the teaching that uh, the conventional or the relative compassion will not able to cut the root of pain, root of suffering. Um, so people were asking about, you know, does the ops absolute compassion uh, will able to cut the root of pain? So, so the answer is simply yes. Um, let me say what let me define a little bit more this what is relative compassion and what is the absolute compassion from the particularly from the point of view of Dzogchen. Um, the relative compassion is more emotion involved in it. So basically uh, this sense of I, sense of empathy, sense of me, these beings be free from their suffering. May my pain be free. So some sense of more empathy, emotion related uh, feelings, though that is more like a, um, a relative kind of compassion. Sorry, it sounds a little bit more very theoretical here. So basically, it, let's keep it very simple. When the compassion gets more emotional, with the personality, with the conditions, uh, with some sense of uh, involved with the personality, then that, that kind of compassion practice is hard to cut or impossible to cut the root of pain. And when absolute compassion is when, when one is uh, able to go beyond the ego, one is able to go beyond um, personality, able, one, when one is able to abide in the nature of mind, in a pure awareness, and then one, one is able to connect with the pain from that pure awareness. So basically, uh, it is from where you are connecting with the pain, it's very important. So when you are connecting with the pain, with the pain, it, it does not help. Most of our cases, we are connecting with our pain, with the pain, and pain 
increases the pain more. So when we are connecting with our pain more with Im positive emotional sense of compassion, like a, a caring, like a mother caring to the child, a mother loving to the child, or mother uh, connecting with the child, or mother holding the child, mother touching the child, Mo mother is presence, fully presence with the child. So these emotional presence, care, attention, love, compassion are what I call relative. And that is absolutely very important. It has a very important role in healing. But sometimes, I think in the Western world, uh, particularly in the Western world, people get too much attached with these feelings, these emotionals, these personalities, these dualities, these conceptualizing, uh, conceptualizing it, uh, like analytical uh, uh, connections. So when we do that, then it's harder to basically overcome the feeling, uh, overcome the pain. So, so that is, I think, what uh, what really uh, the distinction here about the relative. Uh, compassion and absolute compassion. So that basically uh, both are equally valid, both are important. Uh, it depends on each individual, uh, people who are very much able to uh, abide in the nature of mind, rest in their being, connect with their self. If they have that truly their ability, then that is a good uh, uh, has a good op uh, a better option, uh, a better approach to be in there. And when from that open, unbounded space, when the compassion, effortless compassion, uh, spontaneous compassion or sp spontaneous care or love arises, then that energy turning toward the physical or emotional pain. So, but that is kind of emotion, but came from that more right place, not from the pain, not from the ego, from awareness. It arises from awareness. And, and when, when there is no particular kind of uh, emotions like that or warmth like that, but uh, st even just still resting, still resting with presence, with that pain, it's also very beneficial. So once again, so this sense of relative and compassion or emotional and non-emotional awareness, I think uh, it's, uh, it's really like a, depends on a person to person. So generalizing, saying for everybody you do this or everybody don't do that or something like that, I think it's uh, uh, not right. So basically each person, it depends on each person. So, yeah, so that the so the first question was uh, Lisa raising Barry's question about uh, if the emotional compassion does not cut the root of the pain then does the absolute meditation cut the root of root? Uh, if yes, then how is this work, right? So basically, yeah, so as I said, um, it, it, it depends on person to person. I think uh, when people trying to generalize these profound, deep meditation, and I think that's mistaken. So. So I would say that, uh, uh, generally speaking, uh, the absolute awareness is the only one which cuts the root of pain, and uh, but the emotional or uh, conventional sense of compassion definitely plays a very important role in healing of pain, particularly people who are not able to be uh, less attached to their feelings, their emotions, 
um, uh, or they are too much caught up in their emotions and feeling. For those people, uh, it's it's maybe more beneficial. So so that's what's happening. So the Donna uh, Carey's question is about. Uh, please tell us more about the differences between absolute compassion and relative compassion. So I think we uh, basically uh, we spoke about it. The differences between the absolute compassion and relative compassion is, if you simple in a simple way, absolute compassion is the pure awareness. Relative compassion is the awareness which is involved in emotion or feelings, uh, thoughts. So that is more, whenever thought and emotion is involved, then the pure awareness has less place. So, so basically, um, again, once again, uh, it's, it depends on person to person. So question about using the hand. So when during the last meditation, I was uh, probably one point I was holding my hand uh, to the heart, and uh, during the meditation. So the question is, what what is the role of holding that? I think uh, sometimes, particularly in the heart area, uh, when we are meditating, meditating, and specifically. Um, a meditation or some explanation about the heart. I tend to do this hold here because whenever I hold this attention here, I feel it's easier to bring my attention and I feel it's easier to bring my awareness here. So, so that is the kind of reason why we are doing that. And last time I talked about, gave the example of the, the the light. So I think I just wanted to say a few words about this once again, and uh, before we go into a short meditation. So each time, then when we, our awareness is brought in a particular location, when we talk about a spacious, luminous mind, spacious, luminous mind. Or spacious luminous hug, so we are. Our pain is where what where we are hugging. Who is hugging? Is the spacious luminous, um, spacious luminous warm warm quality. So, so this is like this. So I am in my heart. So if example of in my heart, if I have a pain in my heart, so first of all. I try to go into deep sense of stillness, silence, and spaciousness. Then I bring my uh, full attention to my heart, and I'm trying to be aware of my heart, and I'm trying to be aware of pain in my heart, and I'm trying not to identify with that, uh, uh, purely resting in that awareness, and then bringing my attention. So this is. Uh, this is my awareness, so it's it's shining on my heart. So this awareness, this light has a, a three different qualities: spacious, Feeling more open, luminous, the light, and the warmth, the warmth of the light. The warmth of the light means. The light is referring to awareness. Of course, it's not a torch or it's not the iPhone, but uh, 
the light is the awareness. So when my awareness is brought right to my pain, there is a warmth in that awareness. Spacious, luminous, warm hug. To my pain in the heart, or to my pain, to your pain, anywhere you, are, you have a pain, you are bringing your attention there. Just imagine for a moment you lost the connection of awareness, you lost the connection of that light. When that happens, just imagine it's gone. There is no awareness, connection of awareness. There is no warmth of that light or warmth of that awareness to your heart anymore and I recognize that, then I bring my awareness back. I am open toward that pain. I am connected toward that pain and presence. I'm aware and the warmth of awareness is there. Just continue pure presence of awareness at the pain wherever you are focusing. Not hold your breath, breathe deep, Release any tensions, any discomforts. Just breathe like almost like a twice longer. Now, be aware, some of you find it, this meditation, not too difficult, easy. You are able to rest, you are able to be, you are able to connect, you are able to remain aware. You are able to sense the warmth. You are able to communicate that warmth toward that pain. You feel there is a communication, your, your awareness and your body, particularly that area, particularly with pain. There is communication. There is healing. If that is true, then just continuously remain like that.
I'm going to uh, move my hand away, but st you continuously remain uh, aware, presence, uh, feel the light as like this phone. But when there is, when you lose it, you can we feel the absence of the light and bring back the bring back the awareness. Continue. So this is more like a absolute a sense of compassion or meditation of pure awareness. Now though to those who are is facing some challenges not able to rest feeling more restless not able to be, you're trying to become, not trying to connect, you're putting effort and losing connection, not, not able to be aware, not able to feel the presence of light and the warmth of that light. Then from that place of the stillness, silence and spaciousness, Allow the feeling of positive emotion like compassion or like love or like kindness toward yourself, toward the one who is in pain, toward the location, your heart, your chest, your arm, your leg, wherever the pain is. Just bring this a, a caring, loving, emotional attention like a mother would bring to a child. A caring, loving, beautiful mother who is aware of the pain of the child and who is who is aware the child is suffering, uh, suffering for a long time, and suffering which which is ignored and not pay attention, she recognizes and she completely changes her relationship to the child, to the pain of the child, and bringing that full warmth of emotion. Now, just for a moment, just be aware of these two different approaches. One more absolute sense, just purely remaining 
connected with the awareness, knowing to feel more the compassion, more emotional compassion, emotional sense of kindness, emotional sense of love, like the mother who is bringing those kind of attention to the child, and child is feeling very supported. That's more like a human, humanly. That's something that more we are familiar with. So, either one, either way, it's fine, whatever is most easy, comfortable, effortless you experience. So, more trying that, and then absolutely it's okay to sometimes shift back and forth whenever it's necessary. Okay, so thank you very much, and uh, I hope uh, this practice was uh, beneficial. Uh, so this is the continuation of this uh, practice, what we did the last, last session, and so this is, uh, you can try to continue. I hope that in terms of the relative and conventional sense of practices, it's a little bit more helpful, hopefully a little bit more clear. Uh, Sometimes uh, more explanation it makes more more confusing, so hopefully it's not like that. Um, yeah, so I think uh, hopefully that uh, all of you have some good experience, so if you wanted to uh, share your some of your experiences, please go ahead. Uh, so, do you understand conventional sense of working? Or do you under, uh, understand the more like a uh, working with the pure awareness? Um, what is easy for you? What is harder for you? What is more effortful? And can you? start with one and then go to the next one or how, just whatever experience that you are having please do share and i think the next uh, session will be um no, i don't remember all the date, dates and details here so i would recommend everybody to just pay close attention to to the announcement on twr facebook live for next important meditation and uh, meditation working specific with the with the pain, and, uh, and I will maybe kind of explain a little bit also, you know, the role of the prana, which kind of how we started the whole, the series of talks, um, the nine wind, and uh, and how does the pain and sickness start, and so we will maybe go back and touch a little bit on those things, and then for we will have ten days. Uh, every single day, 10-day practices, and I hope that uh, please let many, many people know that uh, to this is like, a, you know, we are taking a lot of time to organize it with the team, and we have all these translators uh, helping, volunteering, and we have all the practice leaders who are around the world in different languages, and there, they will be dedicating every day, every day practices in each languages, in, and they will also try to adapt their, whatever the best timing is, it's for each places. Um, I know, like uh, uh, that, this this timing is good timing for me in in the morning here in Kathmandu, Nepal. But maybe this is uh, too. I even though I see some of the Europeans, but this is a uh, difficult. Uh, kind of time for the Europe, so uh, I think the the team is trying to organize in a way that uh, it will adjust the time uh, more comfortably. More people will be able to attend. So, so please uh, let everybody know, and uh, and this will be like your personal guided retreat at your home. So don't miss it. Thank you very much and uh, all the best wishes from Kathmandu, Nepal. Bye now.